Hello everybody, welcome to the course on Dynamics and Control. My name is Pedro Albertos. I am professor from the Politecnical University of Valencia in Spain. The topic of today will be models of systems and signals. This is the third uh, session on that. And in particular we are going to deal with the formalism. In the previous days we saw about the models uh, analogies and representations. And today we will start with the, uh, trying to formalize the representation of uh, these models. <clears throat> so if you consider, for instance, a continuous time signal, like that one in the on the screen, uh, y of t equal y of zero, sinus of w t plus phi, then uh, <clears throat> if you want to represent in a compact form, you realize that here the three, there are three parameters. The magnitude, y0, the frequency, w, and the phase, phi. So, uh, you can also use some kind of transformation. Instead of uh, being a representation of the time, like in the screen, you can use uh, something which is called the Laplace transform, which is transforming one signal of uh, time into one, one signal of uh, the another variable which is called the Laplace variable, the complex uh, Laplace variable S. In that uh, case, the same signal instead of y of t is represented by y of s uh, equal w uh, s over s square plus w square and y uh, zero. <coughs> Uh, this is uh, a general uh, tool that we will see in uh, an appendix, something more in detail for those who are interested in the mathematics of the Laplace transform. But here, for instance, if we consider an ex exponential, y of t equal y0 e power of uh, a t, the Laplace transform is uh, another uh, function of s, y of 0 over s minus a. And the nice thing is that uh, this uh, equivalence, this transformation is by univocal. That means that given y of t, you can get y of s and vice versa. <coughs> In the case of uh, discrete, uh, discrete time signals, you can see here uh, that this signal can be represented by a sequence, uh, a sequence of uh, numbers the value of the, sig the signal at time 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And you can also represent that in a compact form, like a, a function y of k, for k equal 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, can be expressed by this formula. Again, for a discrete time signals, you can use the, Laplace, the C transform, which is equivalent to the Laplace transform. And if you re, uh, see in this uh, expression here, we are using what is called the delay, delay operator. The delay operator, set minus one, uh, expresses that here you can see that uh, <coughs> y of z is equal zero uh, plus 1.5 z minus one plus 2.25 c minus two because there are two delays and so on that you have a set transform. And in many cases this uh, set transform can be summar, uh, sum and then you get this compact expression. Well, uh, in this case the parameters of this uh, representation are not precisely the same as those in the sequence, but uh, you can see that the number of parameters is limited. Here there are only three or four parameters, whereas in the sequence you have an uh, infinite number of uh, parameters. So if now we consider a system, and we saw the other day that the simplest way of uh, representing a, a process is by means of an algorithm. Uh, for instance, here we have this uh, very simple algorithm, y of 0 equal 25, and then recursively for, for k equal 1 to k equal 100. We have this recursive expression, and then we represent uh, y uh, of uh, k, then this is the model, and the model can be also expressed in a compact way. So, <clears throat> this model, if we again consider the uh, delay operator, then 
y of k is uh, equivalent to y of z, u of k is equal in, uh, equivalent to y of z, and y of k plus 1 is z, uh, y of z. And then, by means of the, the operator, this can be transformed in this way, and then we define what is called the transfer function of the plant. <clears throat> we will see some examples to uh, realize what that means. For instance, in the case of a tank uh, system, we have seen before, uh, we made a water uh, balance. That means that the uh, flow inputting the tank is equal to the flow outputting, outlet uh, flow, plus the uh, flow retained. The outlet flow is uh, a function of the high of the, the level of the water. And the retained flow uh, depends on the, also on the um, amount of uh, water um, kept inside the tank. And you can see here in this formula that uh, the um, flow Q of R times the time is equal to the area of the uh, tank times the increment of the uh, level. <coughs> So we can transform this in this way, and this is a differential equation which is representing the tank system. And we can do that for um, any system as far as we know what is happening inside the system. For instance, remember this electric circuit. We have the resistor R, the capacitor C, and then we can make again a balance of uh, voltages. And we can say that the input, uh, the voltage of the input it's equal to the voltage in the resistor plus the voltage in the uh, uh, capacitor. And in the capacitor, the voltage is equal to the charge accumulated in the capacitor divided by the uh, capacitor C. <coughs> so, but this accumulated charge depends on the current through the capacitor in the previous time, from minus infinity to this is the integral of or the accumulation of the mm, current. And <coughs> in this expression, we can uh, use the derivative and also say that the current is uh, proportional to the derivative of the voltage with respect to the time. And then all together makes this uh, equation. And all together, if uh, um, we can rewrite in this way which is a model of the electric circuit. And this model is uh, very mm, simple to be modified, also applying the Laplace transform. So, <clears throat> the Laplace transform has a number of uh, properties that we will see in the appendix or in this uh, extension for mathematical basis. Uh, first of all, the unicity. Uh, for each uh, y of t, we have one and only one y of s and vice versa is a, a linear operator that means that the Laplace transform of the sum of, uh, of a combination of signals is equal uh, the combination of the Laplace transforms of the signals and this is a very important property the Laplace transform of the derivative is the function the Laplace transform of the function multiply by s. And this property will allow us to transform a differential equation, like here, like here, a differential equation into an algebraic equation. So if we apply this to this equation here, the derivative is converted into s times uh, w, uh, v, uh, the voltage, uh, and this is equal to this expression. And then uh, we can um, extract the value of the voltage in the capacitor and finally we get this mm, operator which is what we will call the transfer function of the electric circuit. The, this operator will allow us also to mm, uh, model the system experimentally. Assume that we have a system and we apply an input which is constant. The value is uh, uh, fixed 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So we mm, use the C transform of this signal, that is in that case 10 over 1 minus Z minus 1, 
And then we get this uh, response. This is the response of the system that we don't know what is happening inside. And then uh, we are able also to get the C transform of the signal. And then based on the definition that we gave before, the transfer function will be the ratio between the transfer, uh, the C transform of the output over the C transform of the input. We can get this model based on the knowledge of the behavior of the system, like in the case of the electric circuit, or the tank, or the oven, or many other systems. But if we don't know what is happening inside, we can get experimentally the model of the plant. I repeat, just we apply some signal. From this signal, we know what is the C transform. We get an output. We can compute the C transform of the output, and the ratio between these uh, two C transforms is the uh, transfer function. <clears throat> Once we get the transfer function, we can use uh, some properties. For instance, we can combine two systems in a series. If we have uh, the system one and the system two with transfer functions G1 and G2, the total is equivalent to the product. So instead of having two equations to represent each one of the systems, we can combine in one single operator. If we have a parallel composition, then again we can say that the output Y is the sum of the output of uh, the system 1 and the system 2, and then the uh, global system can be represented by the sum of the operators. Even more complicated, we can have a, what is called a loop arrangement, in that case, we can very easily, and we will see that also in the uh, appendix, if you are interested in, that we can derive what is the ratio between the output and the input, which is given by this formula. So, uh, by knowing the model of the components and the uh, structure, we are able to derive the uh, model of the whole system. <coughs> uh, the kind of system that we have uh, seen until now uh, can be classified according to the signals we are dealing Continuous time, discrete time, uh, logic of uh, binary systems, deterministic or stochastic systems, approximated or concrete systems, monovariable or multivariable systems. And also uh, we can, uh, according to the operator, define the system as uh, a linear one or nonlinear. A linear is when the uh, superposition uh, applies. That means if the input is uh, y and the in, uh, input uh, in, and the output is o, e, sorry, if the input is u and the output is y, if the input is uh, two times u, the output is two times y. That is a, a linear operation. And we are also dealing with uh, dynamic systems like in the case of the electric circuit, where there is a history that we are retained in the model, the accumulation of the charge in this case. And this is a time variant. That means that it doesn't depend on the times. The capacitor, the resistor are constant, so it's a time invariant. And it's uh, concentrated. That means that all the variables only depend on the time. They uh, don't depend on the space. For instance, if we consider the temperature in this room, uh, the temperature is not uh, constant in any point in the room, and in that case, this will be a distributed system. Of course, the model of the systems, when they are nonlinear, when they are uh, uh, invariant or time variant, and if they are uh, distributed, are much uh, more uh, complicated. So, <clears throat> also we can classify the models by the way we uh, obtain the model. In the black uh, box uh, type of models, we only represent the input-output relationship. And this model is obtained uh, experimentally by using analogies, and we are not considering what is inside. So we are assuming that the system is in equilibrium with a new uh, initial conditions. In the case of the white box, we know what is happening inside, and we represent the internal and external variables relationships, and we 
derive a number of equations based on the first principles and in that case the initial conditions are considered. So the summarizing the representations are signals that can be a function of time or a transform in the set transform in the case of uh, discrete time signals or uh, the Laplace transform and the systems that are represented by an operator, the transfer function. What have we seen today? Well, we have seen uh, the formalism in modeling systems and signals. In particular, we have seen what are the main parameters of uh, uh, signal information. And we have uh, used the transformations to represent the signals. And for systems, we uh, have uh, express the model as operators or as a set of equations and we have seen how we can deal with the structure of the um, plant. Let me just uh, mention now a historical curiosity. This is a steam generator which is a machine which is producing some uh, energy based on the steam uh, produced in a, a chamber, a firing chamber. So <clears throat> One of the advantages of this steam generator is that the steam that is produced uh, somewhere uh, can be used to move a, a cylinder and thus this cylinder is uh, moving a wheel and then this wheel just is used for moving any um, machine in a shop floor or in a factory. And you can see here in the middle a small device which is turning. Let me just have a closer look here. This is the governor or the uh, speed uh, control. You see uh, here, as far as these uh, uh, balls are moving, if they increase the speed uh, due to the uh, centrifugal uh, force, they will uh, span. And then they will allow us to close the flow of the uh, steam. So here you can see these two balls when they are turning if they uh, increase the speed they go up and this uh, cylinder in the middle B will go up and that means that we can close or open um, the flow going to the steam generator. Uh, it's uh, nice to remember that the first time that this problem was tackled in a theoretical way was uh, in 1868 by Clerk Maxwell in the very well-known paper on, on governors. <clears throat> this is a picture, a nice picture of a museum here in Spain where you can see in, in real in dimension, in the natural size, uh, a governor and you can in this museum also see a an antique uh, machine uh, running. So let's uh, explore the control systems, their structure, their goals and the benefits that we can get by them. So what is the next in our course? The properties of the control systems. We have seen till now dynamic systems in general and now we are going to concentrate in controlled systems, trying to analyze the behavior either static and dynamic, dynamic and also uh, some other properties like sensitivity and robustness. Well, thank you for your attention.